Okay, so this client of mine has come in with about, I think, three months of regrowth, maybe four. She's about a level five, six naturally. She likes to be really, really blonde. Every time she comes in, she's like, let's go as blonde as possible. And I am going to teach you guys today how to lighten hair without overlapping onto previously bleached hair. Oh, my baby. Okay, so today I am using this lightener that Fanola sent me. I have never used this before, but I'm super excited. It's called the Orotherapy 24K D-Color Keratin Lightening Powder. That was a mouthful, but it's for a reason. All of the things that I said just there means that this lightener is very gentle on the hair. Its goal is to lift the hair while adding moisture back in and to make sure that we don't have any dehydration or damage while lifting. It's a blue powder. It comes with its own activator, which I just mixed in, and I love that this activator you can actually like pour it out it's so so helpful so I'm excited to see how this bleach works and you guys we are dying my client found this photo from when I first did her hair the before she had like stripey highlights and I did a balayage in my mom's kitchen so she was one of my first clients ever it's been like I think five years since I've been doing her hair so shout out to Anna for always trusting me so we are highlighting her hair I am doing very finely packed baby lights on her to get her as blonde as possible as you guys can see, she has quite a bit of regrowth, but we don't necessarily want to overlap onto the blonde that she already has. Even though in her head she wants to be lighter, I'm not wanting to put bleach all over her ends. I am wanting to do that at the bowl with toning and maybe a little bleach wash. I'll show you guys my little tricks. But in the foils, I want to focus on the root area only. So as you can see here, I am just saturating her regrowth. That is what I am focusing on so that I don't take it through the ends. And then I'm going to weave out any darker pieces that go further down than that regrowth. And then I will put another foil under those to protect the other pieces of blonde hair I don't want to touch. And then I'm going to be putting lightener over these pieces, as you can see me doing here. And then I will fold these foils up together. And that way, everything that was dark got touched without me having to go down into the blonde hair. So I'm crazy. Watch your bend that back for me. Most of the time overlapping is really easy to avoid if they have a lot of regrowth. The hardest part is when they have like half an inch of regrowth. So it's definitely easier on a client like this, but I think some of these tips will help you guys. Just make sure that if you're using a lightener that swells that you don't go all the way down and you try not to feather down into any of the lightened hair. Right here I am just going to be doing that weaving trick again. I feel like this is really the best way to do it if you're trying to be super careful. Not every piece needs this. There's some that are longer than others where the dark goes further down and some are higher up than others. So I just do it on the pieces that are needed. You get to flap with me. Okay, so on this one, I am going to be feathering down, but I'm going to do it a little differently than just extending my brush down. First, I am covering all of the regrowth, and then I'm going to feather upwards once most of the product is off of my brush. So you can see right here, I'm just touching those pieces where they're darker extended down, feathering upwards, and I don't have a full brush of lightener. It's just the leftovers from what I had used at the regrowth area. This is also a good way to do it. Make sure you're not folding your foils too, too tight because then the lightener, the lightener will expand in the foil. So make sure if you're doing it that way that you have a little breathing room inside of your foil. Another good tip is to use this Freemar brush. It is a smaller one and it is meant for things like this in my opinion. I love using it for both balayaging and root touch-ups like this one because it is tiny. It can give you a more precise application, especially for hairline detailing like I'm doing right here. I am going to be doing a few slices around the face just to make sure that she is really bright in the front and using a smaller brush helps for that. It ensures that I don't take any product too far down and it just kind of keeps it really clean as you're applying. Okay, so she processed for about 55 minutes. I let her sit almost an hour just because she is so dark and she pulls warm because of that. I have her sit under the dryer for the last five minutes and now we are pulling her foils. And before I get any hate about her not wearing a cape, this client of mine requested not to wear a cape because she was really hot that day. So she was totally fine without one. I just know I'm gonna get a comment about it. Um, so we are now washing. We use a clarifying wash called Maxi Wash by Kevin Murphy. I think I've mentioned this in a lot of videos before, but I always like to clarify the hair before we tone. That way we can remove any impurities, bleach buildup, and we give a really nice canvas to tone on. So we are doing that first. 
And then in this situation, we are going to be doing a bleach wash on her mids to ends. Since we only touched her regrowth in the foils, I want to pop open her cuticle just a little bit so that the toner can take a little better and she does feel a little brighter. Because a lot of clients who are already like a level 9, 10 will come in being like, I want to be blonder because we all know blonding is an addiction. And to please those clients, I do the foil touch up and then I do this at the end just to ensure that we can get it a little brighter without having to put bleach on top of lightened hair in a foil. So as soon as we are done clarifying the shampoo, we are going to be taking our leftover lightener and we are going to be adding shampoo in with it. And we are just going to saturate that through her mids to ends. I think on her, we let it sit about 10, 15 minutes, just enough to pop open the cuticle a little bit. And like I said, since she's already really light on the ends, she doesn't need much. It's just a little extra something before we tom. I can take you down for a ride. Take you around my life Jaywalking, crosswalking, lip locking But you, I know it, you know it Alright, so after that bleach wash is done sitting, we are going to be coating her ends in the Olaplex number two. You guys know we love to do this before we do the root tap. That way the client gets a treatment and it also protects the hair from any of that root smudge transferring down. So that's what we are doing here. And then we are brushing through it just to make sure that everything is nice and smooth. And then you will see my assistant part it with the comb and then we are going to start applying the root shadow. Also, make sure that you guys are following both me and my company on Instagram because we have some exciting things launching in a couple of weeks. I will give you a hint. What my assistant is doing right now is going to be a little bit part of it. I hope that that makes sense, but we have four exciting products launching in less than two weeks. So make sure you're following us on Instagram and you can see what we are going to be doing. Take you down for a ride. I take you around my life. Jim walking, cross walking, lip blocking, but you. So we are just doing a root shadow on her. She likes it to be pretty subtle. I don't like to tap on her because her root is so dark that I want a little bit of more depth at the base and I want it to be a bit of a more natural grow out. So we're doing a shadow which is just kind of in between a tap and a smudge. I plan on doing a video on the difference between a tap, a shadow, and a smudge because those are the three techniques that we use the most and I wanted to showcase the difference. So we are using Redken Shades EQ 7N7NA and we are going to let this sit about 10 minutes and then we will tone her ends.
So we are now just rinsing out the Olaplex and the roots, and we are going to be toning. We are toning with Redken Shade CQ 9P 9V. That is my go-to for a nice pearly bright blonde. I absolutely love it. You guys know that that's like my favorite toner combination ever. And we are going to be toning her and leaving it on about two to three minutes, and then we will follow up with shampoo and conditioner. Oh my baby, got me staring at you. So I'm crazy. Won't you bend that back for me? We won't stop, got your feet both locked You get to flop with me I can take you down for a ride I take you around my life Jaywalking, crosswalking, flip blocking But you, I know it, you know it After toning, we either do one of two things. We will either purple shampoo and mix it with regular shampoo to dilute it a little bit, but to help reinforce the toner. Or if the toner did sometimes go a little too ashy, we just regular shampoo and conditioner. That's what we did on her just because some areas of her hair that were super porous picked up on more of the ash tones. And I just wanted to strip it a teeny tiny bit. So we used Kevin Murphy's Hydrate Me Wash, followed it with the Hydrate Me Rinse. And now she is all toned, dried, and ready to go. I am just giving her a little health trim by dusting her ends. She seriously has the best hair ever. We chopped it not even a year ago, like just below her shoulders, and it's already grown this long. And I'm just amazed. She takes such good care of her hair, and it helps that we don't overlap that lightener every time. We do little tricks like I have taught you guys here today. So I am just dusting her ends, and then we are going to be curling her. I get a lot of questions about my favorite curling iron and by far it's the Babyliss one and a fourth inch iron. I also love the Kristen S. I kind of go back and forth between those two and I actually just ordered the longer barrel Babyliss. It's still one and a fourth but it's longer and it's black and I'm so excited. It's actually supposed to arrive today so I will do a curling tutorial when I get it. Okay, now that she's all done, we are in front of our backdrop and I am just taking photos. At our salon, we have a white backdrop, a black back backdrop, and then also a rose wall. In the new salon, we will have the same things plus a few extras. We have like a whole little room dedicated to photos and we will also have a photo studio in our warehouse, which I'm super excited about because I really do think this is like one of the most important parts of a hair appointment. I want to do a hair, or sorry, not a hair, a video on everything it takes to take a hair picture. So like in-depth, 
social media and photo taking 101. So let me know if that is a video you guys would like to see. Once again, thank you so, so much for watching you guys. It means the world to me that you guys support me and watch my videos. I am now uploading three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I am here for you guys. Let me know what you would like to see in the future and don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh my baby, got me staring at you. So I'm crazy, won't you bend that back for me?